In this video, we'll begin a series of uh, discussions taking a look at detailed process mapping. And the specific learning objectives for, for this particular video are to take a look at the intended purpose and how a detailed process map differs from a high-level map. Um, we'll look at when it's appropriate to do detailed mapping and, uh, and then take a look at uh, some uh, approaches at how to get a detailed process map created. Uh, we'll also spend some time uh, exploring some of the rules associated with detailed process maps and how they're a little bit different uh, than high-level process maps. And uh, while this video will not focus on uh, building out specific types of detailed process maps, we'll save that for some other videos. Uh, we will show some examples and um, and try to also hit on some of the software that's used by uh, participants to create a detailed map. So I've cleaned up my screen a little bit. I'm pulling information now from the Business Process Improvement uh, Workbook. And uh, before we dive into the details of detailed process mapping, um, let's first take a step back. And uh, we've got earlier videos that describe what a high-level process map is. And we're looking at a high-level process map right here. When building a high-level process map, there are some intended purposes, some key outcomes from building a map like this. And it includes high-level process maps are communication tools. They're used to help create clarity around what uh, this initiative is about. They help us to better understand scope and boundaries early at the beginning of a process improvement project there's often a little bit of uncertainty around where is beginning where is end high level process maps are used uh, for a variety of stakeholders um, i guess what i mean is that there are a variety of different groups that will uh, view and interpret high level process maps including the team will be reviewing high-level process maps, sponsors, the process owner, uh, representatives within the business. Um, we may be using high-level process maps in and outside of the organization uh, as part of our VOC interviews, uh, where when we kick off the interview, we say this is what uh, we're working on and show a picture. For high-level process mapping, a picture really is uh, worth a thousand words. Uh, it's a communication tool. This, on the other hand, is the beginning of a detailed process map. A detailed process map is an analysis tool. Its primary audience is for the team. I'm not suggesting that it's a document that you hide from others in the organization, but it's not really meant as the primary visual for other stakeholder groups other than the team and their analysis of understanding what's going on in current state and what's needed in future state. A high-level process map is typically going to show you the, the common path or the happy path or a simple representation of the process. A detailed process map, on the other hand, is going to show you all of the alternative paths in the system. A detailed process map is an analysis tool. Let's take a look at the differences in the way that we build the two styles of maps. I, I like to call them rules of thumb. For high-level maps, we want it to fit on a single page. It's got to be simple and of the common path. For detailed process maps, this couldn't be further from the truth. It's almost always going to be multiple pages in length. Um, when I see teams that create a detailed process map that still only fits on a single page, I know that they are either um, not fully aware of all of the frustration in the system and represented on the visual uh, known as the map, or they're making the map so difficult to read to fit on a single page that it's not even useful for analysis. It's almost always going to be multiple pages. And detailed maps are going to show all of those alternative pathways. Your detailed maps should include some sort of visual representation of the white space, the rework loops, the uh, all of the alternative paths that lead to increased variation, either upstream or down. 
high-level maps uh, are going to have you know five to nine objects typically a detailed map should be a full representation of the complexity of current state speaking of objects uh, for high-level maps we talked about how really just three objects are needed and they included rectangles diamonds and arrows to represent uh, work group steps or cycle time moments um, inspection or decisions and process flow arrows for a detailed map we're going to open up all of the mapping symbols that make sense to help the team with analysis and this isn't a full listing uh, this is just a sampling uh, but Typically, there are what we call traditional, I call it traditional flowchart symbols, and then there are also uh, what we like to call uh, value stream uh, symbols. These are the symbol sets that are used for a lot of the lean thinking detailed process maps that we sometimes call value stream maps and are a little bit more production focused and include things like transportation, the flow of uh, physical information or electronic information, or even including things like trash, waste, or uh, the amount of time in a particular cycle. Which of those symbols you use for a detailed map? Well, it's going to depend upon the type of process that you work with, um, but I just tell team members, use whatever symbols you need to help you with the analysis. You don't have to be limited like you are with high-level maps. I think the last thing to consider when you're dealing with the differences between high-level process maps and detailed process maps is when you actually create the map. Because of the simplicity of a high-level map, we're going to build this right away. Sometimes it's part of the initial project kickoff meeting, um, could be done during uh, your project chartering activities, um, certainly done before you do any sort of voice of customer interviews. A detailed process map, on the other hand, because of the level of detail, is going to require more knowledge from the team before they can start to build. And so detailed process maps we don't start with. We start with a high-level map, and then we slowly convert it to a detailed map as more knowledge is obtained through the tools and activities that are performed in the define and measure phase of, um, of a demake style project. Typically, detailed process maps are going to occur in order to build these detailed process maps, they're going to need to occur after you've done your interviews and collected qualitative feedback. They're going to uh, be built after a process walk has been performed and direct observation has occurred. Um, they're often going to be updated as we collect and measure and review uh, critical to quality data and overall process performance data. Um, most of the time your detailed process maps are refined. They're refined in the measure phase of a demaic style project. Uh, and sometimes they begin to be built at the beginning of the measure phase and then are refined by the end of the measure phase. Um, at the end of the measure phase though, you should have a pretty good understanding of qualitative and quantitative data associated with current state performance and your detailed process map should reflect that. Another great thing about detailed process mapping is that um, you can take that current state detailed process map and then start to hypothesize what a future state may look like, where a uh, more simplified version of future state is drawn out, um, and we do an as is as compared to a to be version of the detailed map, uh, a great way to start to visualize what future state may look like. So we'll update detailed process maps as we identify what the solutions are. We update detailed process maps in uh, the control phase when we've uh, implemented those solutions uh, and we have a good understanding of what the future state condition is like. Let's now take a little look at how teams go about the conversion from a high-level process map to a detailed process map. Um, I like to call the approach iterative drill down. I've got a couple of visuals uh, that I'm hoping might help with this. Um, early in the project, uh, 
right at kickoff when the team creates the high level map. Um, the high level map may be a simple representation and maybe a, a pretty optimistic representation that shows the common or the happy path. And it's typically done early in the define phase, you know, right up in here. As the team starts to do their interviews, their process walks, um, and starts to collect some of that qualitative direct observation data, what they begin to see is that the process actually is much more complicated. Um, and, and this new insight um, is what we want to try to capture in the detailed map that begins in the measure phase. Sometimes I'll even see teams at the end of their interviews be so excited about all of the frustration that they've occurred in interviews to voice of customer participants that right after VOC, they'll start to create that detailed map. And uh, I'm actually okay with that as long as they treat it as an iterative approach. And what I mean is each person that goes out and interviews a particular work group area should then come back and then drill down on their new findings. Let me let me explain that idea a little bit more in this visual. Okay, so here's what uh, I popped up. Again, this is information coming from the Business Process Improvement Workbook, and uh, this picture at the top uh, is an example of what the team may be given at the beginning of day one as they build their high-level map. Um, and I'd, I'd say that this is a pretty good representation of a high-level map. Uh, it contains flow, uh, and it can contain some of the primary work groups and their activities. But then when we assign team members to go out and interview those different work group areas and walk the uh, walk the process areas that those work groups are in, let's say that I've been assigned to interview the cook. When I go and ask the cook about their cooking ingredients set of activities, they give me a whole bunch of additional information about what's really going on in the cook ingredients step. I'm going to take that information, that drilled down information, and come back to my team, share the results, and then go and add this information to the map. So now it'll be prepare ingredients, but then after that, it's cook the bacon, cook the eggs, cook the toast, fry the potatoes, and then it's serve ingredients. And when my team member who uh, interviews the server, uh, the server group, when they drill down, they'll add their information. This iterative approach uh, where each team member takes the information that they've heard and inserts it into a much more expanded version of the high-level map is the conversion to a detailed map that I'm talking about. Um, we call it iterative drill-down approach. And it incorporates using team members' knowledge and experience as they start to investigate and explore current state process problems. No discussion about detail process mapping be complete if you didn't spend just a little bit of time talking about the software assisted tools that can help. I do know that when you're building these more complex types of diagrams, um, you're going to probably need more than um, the traditional high level mapping tools of uh, uh, sticky notes, whiteboards, uh, a photograph uh, taken of it, and maybe something like the, the simple objects that are used in your PowerPoint style presentation smart shapes. That said, I guess where I want to go with this piece of the conversation is to let you know that there are a variety of tools that can be used. There is a quick summary of them in the Business Process Improvement Workbook. You're probably going to want something more powerful than just the smart shape features in Microsoft Office. Whether you decide to use desktop software or web-based software is really a decision that your organization is going to need to make, but it should allow you to collaborate across team members. It should allow you to create um, detailed drawings with all of the objects that we uh, took a look at earlier. And 
uh, it should allow you to uh, display these images to a broad audience that might not have that software. Um, there's a tendency then to assign this task only to the team member that has that software or that experience. Detail process mapping should be a technique to help increase the knowledge of your team about what's really going on in current state. In future videos, we'll take a look at some specific examples using this software. We'll also, in future videos, take a look at some of my favorite um, formats for detail process mapping, including swim lane diagrams or deployment flow diagrams and uh, value stream maps. Uh, but we'll look at those in future videos.